Okay, now my favorite part of electrolysis calculations. We get to um, actually apply this information into some calculations and determine this is like electro electrolysis or electroplating of some metals. So we get to determine what that really means. What can we get if we were to perform this type of experiment? So if you control the current that runs through a solution, you can determine the amount of product that you will form. And there are some conversion factors that we need to know. And again, you have got to memorize these. Really, we've got two conversion factors that we are memorizing. And they are right here. Um, let me go back, though, to the other information. A coulomb is just a grouping of charge, and an amp is a flow of electricity. You talk about this stuff a whole bunch in physics next year, but this just kind of gives you a little bit of a taste. So if we know we have this group of charge, we have this value, 96,500 coulombs, that's going to equal one mole of electrons. So that's one value we need to know. And then the other thing we need to know is that one amp is the same thing as one coulomb per second. In a lot of respects, this reminds me of something like molarity, where we said that was moles per liter. But when we worked with dimensional analysis, we never plugged the big capital M into our equations. Instead, we always plugged in moles per liter. It's going to be the same way here. We're never going to plug that big capital A in there. Instead, we're going to plug in coulombs per second. And that way, we'll actually get things to cancel out. So for you math people, you'll enjoy this. Um, here's our first example. It says, how many moles of electrons are required to produce 5 amps for two hours. Ooh, I don't want to use amps. I want to think of that in terms of coulombs per second. And I'm given two values here. I've got five coulombs per second, and I've got two hours. And the whole thing that I'm trying to figure out is how many moles of electrons. So I have two options. I can start with my coulombs per second, which is two units, or I can start with my one unit, which is just hours. So I'm going to choose to start with my one unit because I'm not sure what to do with those two units yet. So I start with my one unit of two hours. And I know that I want my hours to go away. I want to eventually get to moles of electrons. So I want my hours to cancel. So I need my time to cancel. If I look back up here at what I just wrote with this, with my coulombs per second, then I need the time to cancel. So if I've got hours in the numerator, I also need to get um, some sort of time in the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with the 5 coulombs per second just the way we see it, where I get the, um, the time in the denominator. So we have 5 coulombs per second. So now I know that I can get those time units to cancel. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that right now. If I have um, hours, I want that's the bigger one, so I'll put that on the bottom. I'm going to say one hour, and I put it on the bottom so that it cancels. And I could do 60, seconds in, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, or I could just jump to this because I know this. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour. That's an equality. 3,600 seconds equals one hour. So the reason I did this is so that my hours would cancel and my seconds would cancel. So now I've got, if I were to stop right here, I'd have my answer as coulombs. I don't want it as coulombs. I want to get it to moles of electrons. But I have memorized my little conversion factors that I can get rid of coulombs and I can go to moles of electrons because one mole of electrons is equal to 96,500 coulombs. So now everything cancels out nicely. I am left with my moles of electrons on top, and I plug it in. I'll just do this in my head real quick. Yeah, there we go. Moles of electrons, 0 0.373. Okay, next one. Um, in this case, we are asked about the mass of copper metal that's produced of 10,000 coulombs are passed through a solution of copper 2 sulfate solution. So I'm given one value that I can work with, the 10,000 coulombs, but I'm also given some other important information here. I know that what I want to do is produce some copper, some solid copper, but I'm starting with copper 2 sulfate solution. 
eh, don't really care about the sulfate. That's a, a spectator ion. But what I can get from this is my half reaction. I can say that I want to produce copper metal from copper two ions. So I start with my copper two ions and I'm going to my solid copper metal. Well, I add my two electrons here. We're going to see that this helps us with our problem now because ultimately what we're going to be trying to do is we're searching for the grams of copper and the only value I have to start with is my 10,000 coulombs, so let's go ahead and do that. And we know our conversion factors, we can get rid of coulombs and go to moles of electrons. One mole of electrons is equal to 96,500 coulombs. So then we see that we've got it as moles of electrons. This is where our half reaction comes in handy. We've got it as moles of electrons. So do you see what we can do? We can say we've got two moles of electrons for every one mole of copper. So now the moles of electrons have canceled out. We've got it as moles of copper and that's not what it asked for, so I can get rid of my moles of copper and easily turn that into grams of copper because one mole is equal to 63.55 grams. So now we just do our math. We've got it all figured out. Everything canceled out except our grams of copper. So when we plug it in, we see that if you were to... Um, if you were to do this process, you'd be able to get over three grams of copper plated out. Okay, last example. This one says if it is necessary to deposit 1.5 grams of aluminum on an object, how many minutes must 5 amps flow through a solution of aluminum nitrate? So I'm given two values here, but um, again, hopefully this jumps out at you that you're given this important information. You want to deposit aluminum, solid aluminum, on an object by putting it into the solution of aluminum nitrate and, and passing a current through it. So you're starting with your aluminum ions and you want to get solid aluminum. So this is our half reaction that's going to be important for us. So I look back and this catches my eye. There's that big old A. I don't want to see it as an A. I want to see it as coulombs per second. That's how I'm thinking about it. Just make sure that you do that within your dimensional analysis. So now I could either start with my two units of coulombs per second, or I could start with my one unit of grams. I'm always going to choose to start with my, my one unit. Little reminder, we are looking for minutes. We're starting with grams, which is 1.5 grams, and that's of aluminum. Okay, hopefully you know what to do at this point. You've got it as grams of aluminum. In your mind, you ought to be thinking, ah, I should get to moles of aluminum. You look at your periodic table, one mole is equal to 26.98 grams of aluminum. So now you've got it as moles of aluminum. This is where that half reaction comes in handy. You see one mole of aluminum is equal to three moles of electrons. So now, let's do some canceling. We see that everything cancels except for our moles of electrons. So in this case, we've got our conversion factor that we have learned, one mole of electrons is equal to 96,500 coulombs. So now we've got it as coulombs. We're getting closer. We thought about amps as being um, coulombs per second, so we can get a time unit out of this if we get rid of the coulombs and go to seconds. So see, I wanted my coulombs to cancel, so I put it down in the denominator. But that means that I've got, if I have five coulombs per second, my five goes with the coulombs and the one goes with the second. So that's why we didn't start with that, that value because we didn't know which direction, which uh, unit was going to be in the numerator and which one would be in the denominator. So now coulombs cancel. 
I've got it in seconds. I've got one last easy, easy little step. I get rid of my seconds and I go to minutes because one minute there are 60 seconds. And now I do my math and it won't even take an hour. 53.6 minutes and it will be done.